All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am joined by Diana Freik, who is up in Seattle in Washington. How are you doing, Diana? I'm doing just fine. I am up in Seattle in Washington. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> good, good. Um, and Diana founded and hosts the Gooder podcast where she interviews the powerhouse women's leading on every level in the food, beverage and wellness industries. Yeah. And you believe that businesses should be a force for good and you use your networking superpowers to drive change, um, especially in the areas of employment diversity. And that's what we're going to talk a little bit about today. Okay. Uh, the subject of Having women in leadership will make a real mm -hmm. difference to the company's bottom line. That's, mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's the premise you put forward. Uh, so sure. let's get straight into it. Uh, okay. why, why does having women, why would having more women in leadership actually mm -hmm. help the company's bottom line? Yeah, well, it's, you know, it's a really a diversity question in general, right? But um, overall, when I, when I have been, I've been in sales and marketing for more years right. than I've been alive, right? And uh, <laughs> as I have spent time, particularly in the trade show, trade show formats, as I, that's mm -hmm. where I get a lot of my networking time. And I started looking around and I was noticing that there was a fair number of women in the industries that I, in the industry that I work in now, but in industries in general, and but seems to, as leading, laddering up, um, not like the women started to peel off and not as many sure. women. And I, I, when I step back and I look at it from a branding, that's what um, my business partner and I do. Mm. We have a branding agency up here in Seattle. We just kind of are always analyzing. We're always on brains, always thinking, and I was thinking, I'm looking at myself and I'm like, what's happening here? We, you know, let's start with what's happening here before why it would be sure. better or why things should change. And really, what it comes down to is I, I noticed that women by and large tend to start businesses because they see a need they want in the family, their community and the planet, that sort of, sort of thing. And men by and large tend to start businesses because they see an opportunity to make money. They're more operationally driven. They're more competitively driven and not across the, not a hundred percent, but just it's sure. speaking in general. And when we're building a business because a business is, made up of humans, the nurturing component sometimes gets out of balance if we don't have the right kind of balance in leadership roles, right? So women nat naturally are communicators, collaborators, and nurturers, and men tend to be more, organi more organizationally driven, um, narrow and deep, and that type of thing. And it's really the strength of the two that make an organization really strong. So I don't necessarily think that a business is in bad shape if it's a whole right. bunch of guys, or nor do I think that there is actually any strength in a women uh, in a business that is run by only women. I think sure, the sure. strength is is a collaboration of the both. Yeah. So why is it when you did your research? Why is it you? Uh, how? What have you found uh, about women? You said there's a leveling off, like, you know, that women maybe don't start to yeah. make it up into those leadership mm -hmm. positions. What are some of the reasons for that? Well, I wish I could be the expert on that. What I can say is I, I've, I've met with and spoken with a number of other women leaders, entrepreneurs who run their own manufacturing businesses. <clears throat> and it's, there's a couple of things that are happening. One is, is that um, business, particularly in the America, in America, North America, but the U.S. specifically, is not really family friendly, so to speak, and women still bury the burden of caring for the household. And I, I use the word burden. It's not really the right thing. At this point, these days, women are making choices whether or not they want to carry the load mm -hmm. at home um, or whether they want their husbands to be shared. But by and large, the woman still tends to be the C COO, CEO of the family they've got there. And as you work up the food chain, the, um, it's not emotional. It's just that all of the, the sec, your second business, which is your primary concern of the family mm -hmm. and caring for the family takes a significant portion of brain space and emotional mind power. And at some point, if a business has a demand and it's not necessarily taking into consideration the needs of 
this particular group of people and um, then you start to lose them by choice. And most of the time yeah. it's simply because the dialogue's not being, being had, right? If women felt a mm -hmm. little bit more comfortable, some of it is them, some of it's culture, but if women were more culture, comfortable going to their peers, their female peers, which are sometimes we feel we're even more competitive with, or their right. male peers and the male leadership and say, listen, here's the situation. I love my job. How do we make this happen? I think that we would stop seeing the level. I think we, that would start to diminish. And I think it's really just open dialogue because we're no longer in a culture of men are this and women are this. And that's, I mean, it could be a bubble that I'm living in. You know, I don't, I, I do live up in the Northwest and I do live in a fairly affluent um, part of the city. I, I don't know what it's like in different countries and for different mm -hmm. people with different backgrounds, but I feel that the conversation is being had so regularly that, that the awareness is there and the conversation is open. Yeah, no, I, I would, I would agree with you. And I, and I think that if there's one thing that's, come out of uh, the, the pandemic here that we like to look for some silver linings and all this mm -hmm. terribleness is I think relooking at the traditional structure of work because if you think about it when a lot of people ended up going virtual and going home yeah. and having to work from home so that immediately and their children were home as well yeah. so that required some restructuring mm -hmm. and I think and I think to your point about the conversation I think it really would behoove organizations to have conversations with their employees about their about their personal circumstances mm -hmm. and say okay let's see how we can reconfigure our work our, mm -hmm. you know, our work day or whatever in order to mm -hmm. accommodate different things and i think to your point i think then hopefully that would make women maybe have be more comfortable about saying yeah i want to get on and i want to i want to do more yeah but i also want to i want to configure it in such a way as i'm not doing it to the detriment of the other parts of my life yeah. Well, and it's mutually beneficial, right? Because I'm mm -hmm. sure that there are a fair number of men out there that would um, welcome the opportunity to be the CEO of the household too. Could, should they feel comfortable having that dialogue? But um, it's just not an open dialogue. You know, in the U, I say, I always say in the U.S. culture, my parents are from Europe. So I'm always, you know, I'm, I'm first generation. I half of, half of my body is European and half of my body is American. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of things that um, Americans do really, really well, that we Americans do really well, really well. And there are a lot of things where the rest of the world is ahead of us kind of going, really people, are we still doing this? And I think the boundaries that we put up as Americans of like my work life is here, my personal life here, my political life is over here, my religious life is over here, my social life. We've got all of these little communities that we that we carry and they don't bleed over into each other. And so instead of it being kind of a seamless organic environment, mm -hmm. there's a bunch of friction at all of the meeting points. And I think that if we could just start to go, yes, this is what I would like, this is how I feel, and that it becomes just kind of an open dialogue, then it's not as scary and it's not so absolute. Yeah, and obviously in order for that to happen though, you have to create the right environment in your organization yeah. to have those kind of conversations. Yeah. And I do think, and unfortunately, I mean, as I said, there's one upside of the, the pandemic is maybe yeah. we're starting to have a bit more of those conversations. Maybe one downside of the situations we live in now is people feel, more inclined to compartmentalize yeah. because, because um, you know, because they're afraid of, of, of mm -hmm. you know, saying one thing or another and ending yeah. up in, in conflict that seems to mm -hmm. be, you know, ubiquitous right now. Yeah, it feels like we have to be in either fierce alignment or fierce unalignment yeah. and there's <laughs> no gray territory at all. Yeah. And um, so I think that this happens this happens frequently like when we're looking at the men and women dynamic and of course is never absolutes i think we still i think we live differently but there's still a mindset that we don't live differently it's this kind of a weird psychology that we've got going on with ourselves and i think women i think women by and large still are afraid um i was just talking with somebody about this but there's actually a couple of studies that um, one of them around, just kind of give you an idea of what women always feel like they need to prove that they are absolutely mm -hmm. qualified, whereas yeah. in men will be like, well, yeah, I, I can hit about 40% of those and I consider <laughs> themselves qualified, which I think is fantastic. I would, I want women, 
I want women to be more like that. I think that allows mm. us to be risk takers. I think, and that's not inherent. I think, um, I think anthropologically risk is not inherent to women because we've always been the protectors of the families and the children. And mm -hmm. so it's a, it's a, going to be a long, slow cultural, but I think in, as we talk about it, it kind of opens it up. Yeah. And it's funny you mentioned that because I did have that conversation with somebody a while ago because they, we were talking about uh, when you look for an opportunity and I say, mm -hmm. you know, I, I would look down the job description and mm -hmm. I would go, could probably maybe hit that one and I'll apply anyway, right? Um, and and yes. whereas where she said she said, whereas a woman most women probably would look down and go, well no, if unless I hit four of these and really yes. know them, I won't I won't even bother replying. Exactly. And she said that's that's one of the differences. So it's funny you reference that because yeah, I mean I think at the end of the day, um I think we always underestimate. I mean, the other thing is, I think we always underestimate our experience of mm -hmm. what and what we've achieved. Mm -hmm. And and maybe we're maybe men. I don't know are, are more more um, inclined to. I'm not going to say bluff their way, but at least give it a go. Sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, whereas whereas women maybe, as you say, unless they can prove it. And but I think they also, if you look back at what you've achieved in all aspects of your life, of I think that's where the that's where the, mm -hmm. the the real pixie dust is in mm -hmm, order to give mm -hmm. yourself that confidence to move forward. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think it also, I think also to have more men um, be advocates, but be vocal advocates, mm -hmm. um, particularly the ones that feel comfortable in that. I mean, not everybody's there. I get that, but the, there are plenty of men out there that want to mentor and um, help women kind of rise up. And I think if they can, identify those opportunities and give a give a leg up um, talk to women and show them how there are certain behaviors or ways that they're uh, believing about themselves that are holding them back and kind of provide that guidance and women don't always need to be the mentors for other women we always feel more comfortable that way but frankly mm -hmm. there are plenty of i mean men have been doing this for generations and generations. I mean, it's called the good old boy, good old boys club for a reason. And why wouldn't we want to have that expertise ourselves? So I think, I think just a general cross sharing is always great for business. It just strengthens us, strengthens us as a whole. Yeah, no, I, to I totally agree with you. And I think that uh, I do think uh, probably um, a lot of men don't reach out and try to mentor for, for whatever reason. Yeah. I think that's a good, that's a good thing to maybe start highlighting for the future mm -hmm. that maybe, start to do that um and and for women to to welcome mentorship mm -hmm. from both men both men and women mm -hmm. because you're right i mean and when i talk to other people it's generally you know women are always looking for a powerful woman role model or mm -hmm. a powerful woman mentor mm -hmm. um and almost always exclude the, mm -hmm. the, ma the men from it and i think you're mm -hmm. right i think both it would be more more balanced mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Agreed, because I think women going to women mentors and men going to men mm -hmm. mentors actually just continues it in a slightly different way. And I think there's so much to learn from from everybody. I mean, just again, going from a di diversity and we can go down a race, mm -hmm. we can go down, um, we can even go down the channel of people with um, accessibility issues. And there are things that we can't understand about leading. We can't actually even be great leaders unless we can have those connections with all these other people. There's nobody can be a leader if you're a leader of a thing. You can be a leader when you're a leader of many. many. Mm. And then that obviously requires um, your ability to communicate with oh, different yeah. people differently, <laughs> yes. right? Yeah. Because let's face it, I mean, oftentimes we'll fall into the trap of having kind of one mode of communication. Mm -hmm. And and um, and often like that mode of communication may work for a particular group. In this case, maybe it works for men very mm -hmm. well, but doesn't work so much for women. But I think generally... Um, if you're going to be a good leader, you have to figure out how to communicate in the way that different people receive information. Yeah, ultimately. for sure. And, but it, and at the same time, you need to be able to be true to yourself because that's mm. really where, that, where the authenticity is. So different styles, absolutely for s different people in certain scenarios, but they have to be, they have to be uniquely yours and ownable. Otherwise it's just BS. 
<laughs> yeah, no, that's a no. I know that is that is a good point. Um, but like I said, I mean, I think if the message is authentic and you do believe right. it, then you know how you deliver it is, uh, mm. you know, is, is you can certainly modify it to that. Um, what would you say are I mean, apart from, you know, the, maybe the, the fear element, maybe the traditional element, is there mm -hmm. anything else that you feel is holding women back from breaking through? Mm -hmm. Well, good question. I, I'm thinking back to the conversations that I've had. I, you know, it's fear, there's self-doubt. I think, I, I think fear is r really the driver, you know, fear of failure, mm -hmm. fear, fear, fear of hurting somebody, fear of not doing a good job. Um, I think that's just inherent to us. I think we're not typically self promoters. We're not great at going out there. That might be mm -hmm. another, that might be another thing is it's like, if you've done something, you should own it. Yeah. You don't have to be, um, you don't need to take a full page ad out in the New York times, but if you've done something, own it, put it on your LinkedIn mm -hmm. profile, tell your friends about it. Um, because that's a gift. Anything that yeah. you've accomplished is a gift that you give to yourself and the, all the other people that are recipients of it. Yeah. And I think that's an important point. And maybe that's another area, as you said, is that you have to be your biggest cheerleader. As you oh, said, yeah. you don't have to hype yourself, over hype yourself. Yeah. And you certainly <laughs> don't have to be arrogant and obnoxious, but certainly you have to be your biggest cheerleader because Absolutely. nobody else cares, cares as much about you yeah. as you do. That's, that's the truth. Unless we're talking about mothers and then that's a whole nother yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is very true. Yes. Um, yeah. But I do think that's it. You, you have to, you have to promote yourself. You have to take, take credit when you have done something, share the credit mm -hmm. when it's, uh, when it's, uh, you know, it's a collective effort or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I think, I think you're right. I think sometimes, uh, um, women maybe you know step into the background when they should sort of step forward and yeah. say no this is what yeah. I did and this is what I'm capable of doing mm -hmm. and then I also think there's a little bit this is another fear thing I think there's a fear of dreaming you know dreaming really big and ex mm -hmm. and expressing it I think and I of all the founder owners that I've met and all the women that I've I've seen rise through the ranks uh, in the industries that I've worked in, there everything always seems to be tapered with the safer side of the, the of the big dream. I don't necessarily mm -hmm. always hear big ostentatious goals from women in the way that I, I see men, particularly business leaders. And I can just kind of go back to, you know, when I was a kid um, uh, and I came home from some crazy, I don't know, I went on a field trip and I came home and um, told my dad that I wanted, wanted to be an under, under uh, deep sea welder. My dad told oh. me that I was insane. He goes, women don't do that. Um, and that at that time I was in junior high and mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I was I always been a big personality. So I was like a little bit like, yeah, well, I'm going to, I don't care if women do or don't, but that kind of stuff sticks in the back of your mind. Yeah, and so, yeah. you know, the next time you share something, you don't go, you don't go with the big, insane, crazy idea. You go, you know, you know, I think he said, you know, our family, all the women were teachers. And so not even joking, by the time I was done with high school, I was like, yeah, I think I want to be a teacher. Somehow yeah. I had talked myself into, and that I would be the best teacher, you know? So that was, mm -hmm. I went, that was the big dream then, mm -hmm. which I, I didn't go down, of course. But I think that mm -hmm. women tend to do that. What's the safe option that everybody's going to be okay with? And then I'll, I'll kick ass at that, you know? Yeah. yeah. Maybe you could have been an underwater teacher. I could. <laughs> I really but wanted to be an archaeologist, really. Uh, but. Uh, but, but, but I think you raise a great point. And I think this is something that, and it's not just for men, uh, for women, but men also. I mean, I mm -hmm. think there are, there are a lot of uh, triggers and, and baggage and stuff from our, 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 upbringing, our cultural upbringings and stuff that yeah. unless, you, unless you take time out to identify them, they can mm -hmm. definitely derail you at different points of, of the process. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think without getting, you know, without being sort of totally navel gazing and <laughs> too, too self-indulgent, it is good to go back and try and identify. And when they crop up to identify it as, oh, yeah. I get where that's coming. Like you mm -hmm. just said there, that you recognize where that came from. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think that's a good thing for all of us to recognize that there are certain things that are not tied to 
who we are today or even to our capabilities are tied mm -hmm. to something else. Mm -hmm. I think women also tend to not spend as much time um, listening to themselves. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, they're so busy planning and doing and making and baking and driving and working and phone calling and planning that I think that there's oftentimes not a lot of time of, uh, for self-reflection and kind of going, is this the right direction for me? Am I pointing myself in the right future? Is this the path of re least resistance? It's going to get me to at least this location. So I think there's a little bit of that that, um, that I think um, all people can really be doing, particularly, I think 2020, a lot of people have been doing that, frankly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's been, and I, there's been so much innovation and I've seen just in the world around me, so many people making some radical shifts because yeah. they've been going down a path for so long. And it was only when they hit the 2020 wall hit them that they were like, well, I didn't even really want to be doing that anyways. I'm just going to make this opportunity to blank. And yeah. I think if we could do that for ourselves more frequently, I think by and large, most of us would be happier doing whatever it is that we're doing our job or uh, yeah, no I, I completely agree with you on the self-reflection and i think this has that's another maybe a little silver lining out of the pandemic is that maybe mm -hmm. it has given people some time and space to do that reflection but i think because uh, here's another thing people say to me all the time like oh i'm busier than i've ever been right yeah um and i always say are you though <laughs> is it are you are you just more distracted than you've ever been because we, we're being distracted constantly bombarded with everything mm -hmm. and i do think that if there's one thing that uh, if people could take some time out maybe put aside some of those distractions spend a little bit more time on self-reflection and really figuring out you know what is it you want to do what why are you even doing what you're doing today all of those questions i think would put everybody in a much better space going forward yeah I have even, I know this might sound crazy, but my family's at home and I have started putting a, a, a regulator or a timer on the Wi-Fi on my kids' devices because it's so mm -hmm. easy to get trapped by that. Yeah. And then I recently, I have an I have a iPhone and my iPhone, of course, once a week will tell me how much time I've spent daily on my phone. And as I, over the pandemic, started ratcheting it up, I went, I wonder if it might behoove me to put that regulator on myself as well. That yeah. time where I just like automatically, oh, in between walking from the kitchen to the front door, I need to check all of my socials. To, you know, really, I, I don't, yeah. you know, and I think when we're so busy taking in input and translating the input, there's no time for that self-reflection. There's no time to think about what you really want. Because you're yeah. just responding, responding, responding. Exactly. No, it is scary to see that. And, and there's a scarier one, actually, I think that if you go and check how much money you've spent on Amazon over the years, but I would not recommend <laughs> anybody doing that because that will just put you into a fit of depression. I did not know. I did not need to know that. <laughs> Um, but listen, I mean, th this has been great, Diana. I mean, I think that I, I really think that this is a fantastic opportunity now um, going into 2021. I think every all the certainties were kind of pushed aside mm -hmm. by the pandemic. I think this is a fantastic time for for everybody. But as you say, that like we're talking particularly here about women is to start to, you know, play a part now in in maybe reconstructing how work operates and, and how, how we traditionally look at, you know, how we set up work, how we set up work days and all of that kind of stuff and be proactive in that process, because yeah. I think it'll lead to a healthier, a healthier workspace going forward. Yeah. And I think a healthier workspace leads to healthier and happier mm. people. Yeah. And we, I think in every sense of the word right now, we, we all need a bit of healing. And I think perhaps 20, perhaps 2020 was the giant etch a sketch shook yeah. everything up in 2021. We can start drawing with the dials again and, and create something that um, everybody feels yeah. better about. Boy, etch a sketch takes me back to being doesn't a kid. I tell you, doesn't it? But it, it, etch a sketch has to be one of the greatest inventions ever. <laughs> Seriously, you still always envy those people who could draw really good things. With oh, I know it. Rather than me, just squiggly or you know craggy lines or whatever. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for that. That's actually brought a smile to my face. There you go. It's a good way to end any interview. <laughs> You're very um, welcome. 
Yeah, all of Diana's information will be below this video. Uh, but before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about what you do. Of course. So I, uh, um, my, my real day job is uh, my husband and I, we own a brand development firm called Retail Voodoo. We're located in Seattle, Washington, and we specialize in brand development for food, beverage, wellness, and fitness brands, particularly in the natural space, but we do extend out to all over. The brands that we support uh, are all over the world. We do predominantly work with North American brands, but more and more, um, the glo our global reach is getting wider and wider. So um, okay. that's where we spend most of our days. Great. Listen, thanks again, Diana. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.